This video is on what happens to your brain when you become addicted to a drug like methamphetamine. Methamphetamine is a stimulant that was originally used to treat narcolepsy and maintain blood pressure. Even after a single use, the drug can turn into a highly addictive substance. Methamphetamine addiction is becoming a rising concern and understanding what is going on in your brain is beneficial to helping your recovery. When taking the drug, the individual feels a state of euphoria or happiness. The initial rush only lasts a few minutes, but the high can last for up to 12 hours. Increased sexual libido, suppressed appetite, and increased energy is also a result of meth use. These symptoms are a result of the drug's effect on the brain, in particular the central nervous system. This system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. Contained in the brain is a reward system called the limbic loop. The loop is responsible for modulating emotions when presented with situations in our environment. Four parts of the brain that are included in the loop include the cortex, the striatum, specifically the nucleus accumbens, the ventral tegmental area, and the thalamus. Both the cortex and the VTA send information to the nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens then sends information to the thalamus. The thalamus sends information back to the cortex where it affects behaviors and emotions. But don't worry, we will come back to this later. The brain is made up of a bunch of specialized cells called neurons. Neurons send electrical signals that get passed through the brain, allowing you to perform day-to-day -day functions. It's kind of like how wires send electrical signals from a source to your living room. What allows the signal to get from one neuron to the others are tiny chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are released from packages called vesicles from the end of one neuron, referred to the acton terminal, to the beginning of the next neuron, called the dendrites. This allows the next neuron in the pathway to receive the signal and react by passing the signal on through a pathway of neurons to its destination. Three examples of neurotransmitters that are involved in meth use are dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters are involved in the reward system and cause the positive emotions associated with daily activities like food, sex, and playing with pets. When exposed to something we find enjoyable, the neurotransmitters will be releasing initiating signals in your brain that results in happiness. An important part of the limbic loop is a GABA neuron located in the ventral tegmental area, which can be called VTA for short. This neuron normally releases an inhibitory neurotransmitter called GABA. If a neurotransmitter is inhibitory, it will prevent the next neuron in the pathway from producing a signal. When experiencing something enjoyable, the GABA neuron that prevents the signal from continuing is inhibited. When the neuron is inhibited, it can no longer release GABA neurotransmitter onto the next pathway. If there is no GABA being released, the next neuron in the pathway, which is also in the VTA, called the protection neuron, is activated. This neuron is responsible for releasing dopamine. Once dopamine is released from the VTA protection neuron, it sends a signal to the next neuron located in the nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens, when activated by dopamine, releases an inhibitory signal that activates a different GABA neuron in the thalamus. This causes increased activation in the thalamus, which increases your positive mood. Once the reward is removed, the GABA neuron will be activated again. This means the VTA projection neuron will no longer be able to release dopamine. However, there is still dopamine floating around in the space between the neurons that needs to be removed so that the signal can be terminated and the dopamine can be reused. So there are two ways to do this. The first way dopamine is removed from the space is through the dopamine active transporter, called the DAT. This transporter, found on the membrane of the neuron, can bring dopamine back into the end of the neuron that it was released from. The second way dopamine is removed is by breaking it down into parts that no longer act as neurotransmitters. This is done by monoamine oxidase, or MAO. After the neurotransmitters are broken down, they can be combined back together in the neuron to form usable neurotransmitters. So let's recap. Reward-like food is present. This causes GABA inhibition. Dopamine is now released. A signal occurs that results in you feeling a positive emotion. When the reward is terminated, GABA is activated again. Dopamine will get reuptaken in two different ways. How does this relate to meth use, you ask? Well, well when you take meth, the dopamine pathway we just described is altered. Meth attaches to the dopamine active transporter, the DAT, preventing it from performing its function. It also prevents the monoamine oxidase from breaking down the dopamine. This means that there will be an accumulation of dopamine in between the neurons, 
as it cannot be absorbed into the neuron or broken down. This prolongs the positive symptoms that you experience when on meth. This video demonstrates the short-term effects of meth on your brain. To learn about the long-term effects of meth and why you relapse, you can watch the next video.